So today I'm just around the headland at Coldale and what I wanted to have a look at um, was part of the Wilton Formation but I've come to this location in the past and something interesting that I've noticed which you can see throughout the other um, parts of the Wilton Formation but here are particularly well represented because they actually have been eroded out are what's known as soft sediment deformation structures and what we might do is have a closer look at these. To give you a little bit of a background, these, um, this particular layer here known as the Wilton Formation um, was laid down um, during the end of the Permian, um, so shortly before the um, beginning of the Triassic or um, Permian Triassic extinction event, uh, which is marked by the Willay Cold measures, which can be seen a little further to, to the north. And um, this was laid down in a period of cool climate um, at the time, so there was various ice rifting and things like that. But what we can see here in the Wilton Formation is various processes of fluvial, so water-based sediment transport. And we can make out various current ripples, as you can see just down here, and other processes which indicate that the water at the time was um, fairly fresh, um, but also varied in height and, um, and depth. So we'll go back and have a look at um, some of these soft sediment deformation structures and to see if we can get a little bit more of um, an understanding of how they may have been formed. So this is um, what's known as ball and pillow structures, soft sediment deformation or um, sump folding. And this occurred um, during the end of the Permian and at this time in this location um, and we're on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia, sitting um, in amongst the Wilton Formation. And at the time, in the south, around near Kayama and Gerringong and also off the coast, there was various um, volcanic activity. Off the coast there was a volcanic arc and if we have a look at the Tongara Coal Measures, which um, if you have a look at that cliff there, you probably won't be able to see due to the shade, but on that top layer there, there is actually a coal formation known as the Tongara Coal Measures. And in amongst those layers are various layers of tough aceous material. And um, tough aceous material are layers of ash that have been deposited. And there's a few layers um, of that tough aceous material that can be seen within um, in amongst the Tongara coal measures. So that tells us that at this period of time, um, at the end of the Permian, in this location, there was various tectonic activity occurring. And these slump folds may be a result of shock waves being passed through this sediment, which would, would have been mud at the time and still retained a lot of water, so it wouldn't have had a chance to lithify. And these slump structures, um, or soft sediment def deformation structures, may be a result of those, or that um, wave coming through the sediment and um, causing uneven um, gravitational loading. So the sediment on top um, would have become unstable and um, due uh, throughout various parts of the, this layer, um, this sediment would have needed to have been balanced out and what happens as a result of that is some of the sediment is pushed up um, into the layers above it or sometimes even sinks down into the layers below it. So this is an example of um, part of that process. So this is another view of um, another soft sediment deformation structure and what we can see is there's quite a few around. We've got another one over here. So these have occurred within the same, within the same layers. And another way that these can be explained is that there has been uneven um, gravitational loading as mentioned previously. And um, the sediment on top um, may be heavier or more dense than the sediment below. So it sinks down and causes part of the underlying sediment to, to rise up and um, that can be another way in which these soft sediment deformation structures have occurred. So if I just tilt down to this layer here, what we can see is part of, um, or a good example um, of part of that um, deformation that occurs. And what we can see is that these layers, which would have been laid down horizontally, um, like a lot of the other layers, have actually um, been pushed upwards. And we can see that in some instances they've even been 
they've even been deformed and um, so that would indicate that a large force would have um, would have had an effect on this particular part of the sediment and caused it to to push up and um, as mentioned before that may be due to tectonic activity that was occurring in the region at the time so what's interesting when you look at some of these um, layers what you'll see is that you can tell um, in some circumstances how much water was on top of the layer um, shortly after it was deposited and um, what we can tell is that these um, darker layers and um, which contain a lot of iron or iron sulfides um, that haven't reacted with oxygen to produce iron oxide we can see the typical rust features of some of those um, sulfides we can tell that um, there's large amounts of iron in this due to the way that um, it has been broken down um, by the water so looking at these what we can see is that we've got um, a darker layer on top of the the lighter reddish um, orange layer and what this indicates is that the darker layer didn't have time to react um, with any oxygen so that would indicate that the water depth um, was greater during that period of deposition and the layers below it uh, we can see that uh, they have had a chance to react with oxygen um, and um, this gives us an indication as to the various processes of deposition at the time, the changes in water level. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in checking out um, these slump structures or anything else um, to do with the Wilton Formation, which is on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia, and um, exists between Thrull and um, the south of Wambara, and at the moment we're just um, north of the Surf Life Saving Centre at Coldale and um, this is a rock platform here and these various sun structures can be seen on the rock plateau um, at low tide.